Hey, hey everybody, I hope you're doing well today. Let's take a look at the price floor diagram, which is also known as the minimum price diagram. And this is a situation where the government sets a minimum price above the equilibrium price, which would prevent producers from reducing the price below it. Remember, the equilibrium price is the goal. And the reason it's also called a floor is that the government sets a price above it and you can't get through the floor in order to get down to that minimum price. And I'll show you on the diagram in a second. Okay, so minimum prices are usually set for one of two reasons. The first thing is really to attempt to raise incomes for producers. So price floors or minimum prices are put in place to help producers primarily and they would they 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 put the floors in place for producers of goods and services that the government thinks are important and the easiest example are agricultural products right and they may be helped because their prices are subject to large fluctuations or because it's there's a lot of foreign competition and we're going to take a look at the wheat market the other way that price floors or minimum prices are put into place is to protect workers by setting a minimum wage okay so what we're going to take a look at is the price floor diagram for the market of wheat. But before anything happens, my friends, the rule of 11, it's the most important aspect to make sure you have an effective evaluation and eva evaluate analysis and evaluation. Rule of 11, count them up. Here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. You need all of those components on a graph in order for you to begin any microeconomic question, whether it be a price floor, a price ceiling, a shift in supply, a shift in demand, an indirect tax diagram, a per unit subsidy diagram, those components are all the same. Get this in your head, read the question, and go, oh, it's a, it's a supply and demand graph, right? Microeconomic supply and demand graph, and that's it. Okay, boom. Rule of 11, there it is. Okay, now what is it? Oh, okay, we're going to take a look at uh, minimum prices, price floors. Okay, what does that mean? Oh, well, I know that that means that, that there's going to be, the government's going to get involved, and here's the equilibrium point. Everybody wants to be equilibrium. Equilibrium is everything. I want to get there, and it's a floor. Uh, okay, so the, it must be something like this. Of course it is, right? All right. So this is a floor. We'll put it in at P2, right? And it results in a quantity of Q2. Why is it a floor? These can get really tricky, my friends, because you might remember that the government's preventing you from getting to P1. And what they want is a minimum price above that. So you know that P2 is going to be above it. And therefore, if, if you're a producer and you want to, you, want to, um, so you want to provide a lower price, boom, you can't, right? You come down, you're a producer, you want to lower the price, oh, you can't. You want to lower the price, oh, you can't. Okay, so a price floor prevents producers from lowering the price um, beyond a government set minimum price. You can see immediately this is going to cause some problems in the marketplace, right? Because right here you can see, and I'll clean this up and we'll take a look at it in a second, right? But this is going to be, actually this is going to be Q2 and this is going to be Q3. What's going to happen? Well, the price floor is going to create a situation where there's excess supply because at the price of P2 up here, right? This is the amount that the Q2 is the amount that suppliers would want to support, would want to supply at a price of P2, except how much is actually going to be purchased? Well, Q2. Why? Because that's where it intersects the, the demand curve. Only these are the only demanders. These little people here are the only ones that would buy at P2. All right. So Q2 is actually what is going to be sold in the marketplace. And here is a price floor put in place to help whom? Producers. And what's it doing? Well, it's cutting their quantity from Q1 sold in the marketplace to Q2 of wheat. So wait a minute. What are they going to have to do? Well, the government's going to have to get involved again because that's the funny thing about floors and ceilings is then all of a sudden the government has to get involved again, right, in order to find a way to push this demand curve outward to D2. Okay, why? Because what they want in the marketplace is a minimum price. The government, the parents of the country are saying, hey, in order for our wheat farmers to make a living, they need to get P2. We're going to guarantee them a price of P2. And, if, and by doing that, that's going to induce a lot of other suppliers to get in the marketplace in order for Q2 to be produced, right? And so what are you going to do with this excess supply? Well, what the government's going to do in most cases is it's the, it's the government itself is going to become the producer. 
and I'm not the producer, excuse me, the government itself is going to become the consumer and they're going to buy up all of this extra wheat in the marketplace. Okay, so let's... So we clean that up a little bit, right? And now we're going we're gonna to look at a situation. Let's put our demand curve back in here, right? So here's D2. And... The problem is that this, and let's just go through it a little bit more in a more organized fashion. The excess supply creates problems, right? Listen to this closely. Producers will find that they have surpluses and they'll be tempted to get around the price controls and sell the excess supply at a lower price, which of course would be illegal. So what's going to happen? Well, what the government usually will do is buy up this in the, in, the, in, the, in the agricultural market, what the government will do is it'll buy up all of this extra wheat. It'll buy up from Q1 to Q2. I'm sorry, Q1 to Q3. And that would essentially push demand outward, right? Because there's a new consumer in the market. Um, and that's the reason it's going to result in increased demand at every price level. So the demand curve is going to shift outward. And as a result of that, right, every, the, the suppliers will actually get the price that they need. But that comes at a cost. Right, the government's going to have to come up with the money to buy up all of that wheat. Where's it going to Where's it going to come from? Well, it's going to have to come from revenues raised elsewhere, usually through taxes. So a price floor creates um, problems on both sides for the government. Number one, it's got to expend money out here in order to buy up this extra wheat from Q1 to Q3. But also, it's going to have to find that money somewhere. So they're going to have to tax something else in the in in the uh, marketplace. Okay, some other, maybe an, an increased indirect tax on cigarettes, maybe, or something. Okay. Now, the other thing, though, is if this is a corn, does the government really want all of this excess wheat? I'm sorry, I said corn. Does the government really want to take all this wheat? Is, this is one of, the most, one of the more intriguing, it's kind of bizarre when you're new to it, but it makes a lot of sense. What, what, what governments do in the European Union and also what the United States does and a lot of industrialized countries do is when they put in a price floor and they know that they're going to have to, they're going to, have to become a consumer and, and, and in order to get demand outward, fill this gap, the government becomes a consumer. What they actually do is they pay farmers to not plant wheat. I have, a, I have my cousin who lives in Iowa. His, one of his best buds signed a 10-year contract with the United States government to not produce corn. It was in the corn market, not the wheat market. What does that mean? He signed a contract for 10 years. The government gave him money, right? Essentially bought corn, which would make the difference between Q1 and Q3. Bought the corn he never planted. And he had a guaranteed income as if he'd planted the corn. But he didn't plant the corn. Why did the government tell him not to plant the corn? Because the government doesn't really want the corn. Because if, you, if the government buys corn, they have to store it, or maybe they even have to burn it, destroy it in some way. I know they could give it away, but by giving corn away to other markets, you actually, as we'll get into in international uh, economics, it's not necessarily good for another country. So what they say is they say, okay, we're going to give you this minimum price, and we know the supply is going to increase, so we're going we're gonna to make sure that we don't act, end up with actually the real extra wheat. So the government just actually buys up all of this quantity, Q1 to Q3, or these suppliers get a P2 price for corn that they didn't actually, and corn or wheat, that they didn't actually produce. Okay, so that solves some problems for the government in terms of what to do with excess wheat or agricultural products. Right? The other thing that they could do is they could, they could also, and this is kind of gets into a different graph, but another way of solving this is to set a quota. So that was one solution, right? Buying up the corn. Another solution would be that the government just says, no, nope, after Q2, nobody else can produce wheat, which is pretty harsh, and that's usually pretty unpopular because there's going to be a lot of suppliers who aren't going to be able to actually produce uh, wheat. But it would give a guaranteed price to, to some wheat producers. Okay. So all of this to say, you need to understand the way in which the market for um, price floors works is that for both ceilings and price floors, the government's going to get involved twice, once for the price floor and once for the solution. For a price floor on wheat, what the government most, li most, li mo most likely going to do, because it's what they do around the world, is the government becomes the consumer in order to expand or push demand outward. And so that this Q3 to get rid of the, the surplus in the marketplace. Okay, I hope you found this video to be helpful and I'll talk to you in a bit.